Hey guys, I am going to talk to you today about prophetic revival. I'm trying to remember everything that I had said um, already uh, in the post above. I think it's very important to understand that um, we we are carrying something in our our generation that is very important for us. Um, very important for us um, in regards to the prophetic. And um, I have been involved in the prophetic for many years, many, many, many years. Um, before the Kansas City prophets, I evidently was functioning in, in some of the realms of that. Uh, we didn't know what it was. We didn't call it that. Um, but I, I want to just... Um, spend a little bit of time talking to you particularly about the prophetic because it's a very significant, um, very significant thing. Um, you know, there's a, a part, part of this whole thing, um, that we must understand the prophetic is not just simply one of the gifts. It is actually something that we must understand. There must be integrity, purity, and the fear of the Lord. There must be. And um, it's not our platform, uh, nor are we to use to embellish our ministry. It's not a circus trick, and it's never to be faked. And the problem is, is that people have been faking it a lot. And um, that is very troubling to my spirit. When I heard some of the allegations that have been brought against others, um, who have been known to be in the prophetic realm, uh, I, I really, I, I kind of broke. I was like, what on earth? Um, because the prophetic is one of the purest, most incredible things. It's, it's intended to be the voice of the Lord. It's intended to be the voice of the Lord. That's Revelation 19.10. Uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Uh, Revelation 19.10. You know, as people come on here, please share and encourage other people to share as you're on the feed, um, because I think this is an extremely important word right now. Uh, there is a massive assault against the prophetic, uh, legitimately so, honestly, uh, if what people think is the prophetic is not the prophetic. And in fact, if if there's fakery, if there are circus tricks, you know, when people are are Googling or checking out social media to find out things on people uh, and then turning those things into uh, prophetic words, quote unquote, prophetic words, um, when there are people assisting even other people, and um, they're calling things hamburger helper. Um, I want you to know that none of the ones that I functioned with or learned from ever, ever spoke those kinds of things to me. They knew, they knew that the prophetic had to be full of integrity, full of integrity. And so I think it's very important to understand that um, I, I want to bring about a, a new level in this. And I'm, I'm going to go back actually to a conference that we did, I believe it was in 2006, um, probably um, February or March 2006. I'm pretty sure it was that one where there was a team of people that came from another prophetic ministry um, out West, and they came with all kinds of different things. They came with these locks. They came with um, a tallit that they put over me that they thought for some reason I needed to wear. Um, it was really kind of a interesting um, occasion because they wanted me to wear it. And I said, man, that thing's going to get soaking wet. I sweat really bad. And they said, it doesn't matter. Um, you're supposed to wear it. They put that on me. Then they gave me a bottle. And in the bottle, uh, it was a uh, the name brand of the water bottle was Revival. And they said they'd emptied half of it and they filled it um, with water from the Prophet River, which is either Oregon or Washington. Those of you out there would know which one it is. And they said that the Lord sent a word to us and that there would be a day where I would release a prophetic revival across this nation. Um, I think probably even beyond that, that right now there's a need for a prophetic revival. What do I mean by that? I mean that prophecy cannot be faked. 
prophecy cannot be something where you're schmoozing. It's not reading people. Um, in fact, you're not allowed to read people. Early in those days, one of the things that I would do, uh, I would go into a uh, a different room before I would ever minister to people. I didn't want to see people. I didn't want to meet people. I didn't want to, and it, it wasn't my um, uh, unapproachableness. I, I would become approachable after the meetings. But before the meetings, I remember I would seclude myself uh, in a room. Um, I would not be on the phone. I would not be on, other than maybe calling my wife. Um, I would not be looking on Google. I would not be uh, looking to figure out who's there, or who's not there. I, I didn't know who the names of the leaders were or people who weren't leaders. It didn't matter. When God gives words, he gives words. And so early on, I would wait until the meeting had started, worship was uh, was beginning, and I would go sit out on the front. People would come up to me many times, and I'd say, not right now. Uh, they would start talking to me, and I'd say, no, don't tell me anything, um, over and over. And the, the reason is, is because the prophetic the prophetic mantle is never intended uh, to be just some little word. And the problem is, is that the prophetic has become just cra- crazy. It's become, uh, we, we use the term uh, encouragement um, for, I don't know what, because all that people are getting are words of encouragement. They're not getting prophetic words. Prophetic words have to be supernatural. It, by, by virtue of the fact that these are, that it's a gift of the Holy Spirit, there has to be something of that. And when people are literally looking and searching out um things on people who might be in the meeting, might be in the room. I was, uh, a few years ago, I um, up here in New England, there was a, somebody who was giving words, and um, and supposedly they had a very important word for me, and I think they expected me to be in that meeting, and they didn't give the word, so I called them. Later, I said, what's the word? And they never answered the phone. They would never contact me back, because honestly, I don't think they had a word at all for me. I think they... They were carrying something that was not from the Lord. Uh, they were carrying something that they knew about me. They knew I was a leader in New England. They knew that I, I, I've been involved in, in breaking through. They, they knew all kinds of things about me, and it was not hard to find. But between my website and my uh, social media, not hard to figure out who Danny is, who he's married to, who his children are, um, where he lives, what he does. Not hard. Um, and so... I take all those things and I throw them out. Why? Because the most it could be would be a word of encouragement from one brother to another brother or sister to a brother or brother to a sister. But that's a word of encouragement. That's not prophecy. Real prophecy requires authenticity. It it, it requires integrity. It, It requires purity. It requires actually already the fear of the Lord. There's a verse in um, uh, Jeremiah. I read it, I think, last week in another post. But I, you know, it talks about those who are dreaming. It says, if, let those who dream dreams share their dream. But let those who carry my word speak it as the very voice of God, the very things that God's saying. And, um, and is, not my, is not my word like a hammer? Is it not something that will shatter? So that's the foundation of this. But what I want to say to you, God wants to develop and raise up prophetic people. Uh, I We could call it the Shiloh Company. We can call it anything you want to call it. But it's people who absolutely hear from God. You know, early on when I first came here to New England, everybody was calling me. Um, and they would call me, particularly when we'd have a gathering. They would come stand in line. I need a word. I need a word for this person. I need a word for that person. I need a word, word, word. Everybody was looking for words. And at this point, I want to just tell you something. That's actually illegal. What do you mean it's illegal? Well, it's illegal because really we aren't, we aren't supposed to give unless the Lord tells us to give. And, and sometimes we can become just these little machines that, well, we prophesy, we prophesy, we prophesy over this person, this person, this person. I mean, sometimes it's, it's not time for that person, or there are things that are not yet to be said that the Lord wants them to reach a certain point in their in their walk. Does that mean that we uh, that we're not seeing some things? No. Sometimes we do see things, and we we are not allowed to share. I've actually had to give words to people I don't like, uh, which is not very fun. Um, I'm like Lord, I don't really like that person. They're mean. They're cruel. 
I, I've seen how they treat their children. I've seen how they treat their staff. I've seen how they've treated uh, their wife. I, I don't really want to prophesy to that person. He's, I want you to call them into their destiny because they're not walking in destiny right now. I was like, oh, okay, I will. But the whole prophetic nature of what God wants to release in this hour is supernatural. And I want it, I want to make this absolutely clear. In, in my life, God has never allowed me, never allowed me to go and try and figure out who people are. In fact, if I find out something about somebody, um, or if they come up to me and they say, I'm going through and they tell me what it is, what happens is I will tell them and those of you who've been in my meetings will, will know this. I will say things like, now you already told me this part. I want you to know that's not revelation. And I want everyone else to know this is not revelation. This is what I know about them. And, uh, and so as a result of that, I, I share with them what it is the Lord's telling me. And if that part plays into it, they already know that wasn't revelation that played into it. The other part is what the revelation is. God wants to raise that up again. God absolutely wants to release a prophetic revival across not just our nation, but around the world. He wants to raise up sons and daughters who will absolutely carry the real prophetic word of the Lord. Why? Because we are entering a season where people need to hear from God. And there are people right now who are lambasting the prophetic because they saw some things happen. There were things that happened in IHOP Casey. There are things that have happened with some of the prophets. But because they've happened with some does not mean it's going to happen with all. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching a harvest coming. And I don't mean just the harvest of lost souls. I mean, there's a harvest where people are absolutely coming um, into the place of maturity, where people are beginning to function prophetically. There are names I could give you. I'm not going to give you names because I don't want you just to go hunt them out. I want you to, um, to be able to discern and listen. Who is really speaking from God? Is it the ones that are just our buddy buddies? Are they the ones who are speaking for God? Or are those, they're those that maybe they're a different culture. Maybe they're a different place. You know, many years ago, uh, when I was coming to New England before I moved here, this would have been probably 2007 or 8, there was a prophetic guy from down south and fully um, prophetic in every regard, but but very different, uh, very unique, and nothing that had been seen up here. Uh, those were the days where people recognized John Paul Jackson up here. They recognized that kind of a stream um, in in the New England area. And I carried a lot of that. But I bring this guy with me on a trip and, and he begins ministering to people and, and people say, why did you bring him? He's, he's not like you. He doesn't minister like you. He's like not in our stream. I said, cause sometimes when you hear people only in your stream over and over and over, you don't hear. And sometimes God wants to bring something from outside the stream. So you will hear. And so I brought this guy in and it was awesome. I loved it. He actually, he, he, he left the room and he said, take your shoes off and put them up here in, in a pile, all of your shoes. And, um, and then he, he told us, he said, mix them all up, just jumble them all together. We did. And he went up there and he began picking shoes. <laughs> and he said, the person who owns these shoes, this and this and this are going on in your life. Da, 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 da. It was hilarious because he put them on, he even put on them. Uh, some lady shoes. It was hilarious. And, and he, he would give a word based upon the person who had those shoes. And they didn't, he did not say to rise up until, but you would hear people go, whoa, that, that's incredible. It's so right on. It was perfect. And at the end, many understood. They realized, wow, this guy was actually responding to the Lord. He didn't want there to be any lack of integrity. He didn't want there to be any show. When the prophetic becomes a show, it's a problem. Because most often it's a show for your platform, for your visibility, for your viability. Prophecy is not 
to give us viability. Prophecy is to give God viability in that place. And so we don't steal prophetic words. We don't learn from others. You know, when, 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 when people are stealing words or when they'll, they'll even use the exact same phrase on another person that they used on or they heard used on somebody else, you're not being prophetic. That's very pathetic. It's not supernatural. You're copying. You're an echo. And God in this hour is not looking for echoes. He's looking for voices. Voices over people's lives, whether it's a personal prophecy or, or, or words over a region that there's no way they could know. Things that would be involving governmental situations, involving land situations, involving serious issues that are happening. God wants that. For those of you who are functioning in any realm of the prophetic, I encourage you not to research and find out the area you're going to. Some people do this in the name of, well, I want to know the people I'm speaking to. I want to know their culture. I want to know what's going on. If you've got Jesus in you and you're walking up to a door and he's telling you to walk up to a door, I promise you that even if you break protocol, do you hear me? Even if you break protocol, they will see the heart of God in you and they'll open that door to you. And I've realized so much that people are in such a weird, they have these weird traditional things and weird honor things. I, I did say that. I did say that. What do I mean by that? I mean, where People are groveling. They're, they're, this is the great prophet. This is a great man. This is, don't grovel. Jesus is the only one that we need to get down and worship. That's again, Revelation 19, 10. Jesus is the only one that we worship. But in the process of releasing a prophetic revival, what am I saying? I'm saying we're not going to follow where some have gone where they have pulled out of a hat weird things, where they're reading. It's amazing to me how many of those who quote-unquote are called prophets are literally reading off of some kind of a script that they've received somewhere. You don't think that God, the God who gave you the word for that person would not revive that name and revive that situation to you in the middle of delivering it? I think he would. Now, maybe if you're sitting in the service... And you've got a yellow pad. And in the middle of the service, the Lord says, uh, there's a guy by the name of, uh, uh, actually, there's a Catherine right now who's watching. And right now, I have nothing in my hands. And Catherine has been walking through some situations uh, in the past three and a half weeks where she she sees the handwriting on the wall and she realizes Things are very significantly broken in my marriage and in my home, and I'm about to lose a lot. And the Lord's prepared you, Catherine. He's prepared you, Catherine, to absolutely know that he will be there with you. And you're not going to lose that God is going to bring about a major shift, a major change in your home. You're going to even notice it over the next few days, Catherine, and you're going to receive, you're going to receive, there's going to be a phone call actually that's going to come not from within your family, but from without. That is going to confirm some of the things that you know are happening, but you don't want to know, but they're going to confirm it. The result of you having that information and knowing that information is going to result in a confrontation that's going to release a repentance in those in your home. And there's going to be healing in your home. And a healing in your relationship. And yes, your marriage will make it. Even though right now you don't think it will. But it will. There are things that the Spirit of God wants to give. He want, he wants to release his presence, his power on people's lives, but it doesn't come from natural means. It's not by schmoozing. I can't see any of you. It comes because the spirit of God is moving in great power, in great power. There's something, there's a Joel. I don't know if you're watching this right now, Joel, but I think you're going to be watching on the, on the restream. Uh, you're going to come back to this. Somebody's going to point you actually here. But Joel, there is heartbreak all over your heart. 
And this, this heartbreak has resulted in you even turning away from the things of the Lord. You were called. You were called. And for a long time, you were passionately in love with Jesus. But about four years ago, you were distressed. You were heartbroken. And as a result of that heartbrokenness, you moved into things that were ungodly. And you've maintained a certain aspect of respect on the outside. But inside, you know that you have fallen. And the Lord is calling you back right now. That God is going to restore your life to him, first of all. And that the Lord does have a future and a hope for you. And and you have wondered, will God really have a future and hope for me after I did this with God? Joel, he loves you. You're his son. You are saved. You were saved. But you have fallen. And the Lord is helping you up right now. Come back to the Lord. And I believe that you're going to come back and there's going to be a full restoration of your life and the call of God all over you. God is a God who moves in power, guys. A prophetic revival means that we move by the things of the Spirit. Some people are like, well, we need to open this well. We need to open this well. We need to open that. Listen, I was talking to somebody about this today. Hey, that's crazy. Why, why are you so worried about opening wells? Well, well, maybe you're supposed to be the well. Maybe you're supposed to be the place that everything is bubbling out of. Maybe, may, maybe the revival that is going to initiate in your region is not in a location or this building or this church or, or these people. Maybe the revival that's going to initiate in your region is from you. That you're going to begin hearing the God, uh, hearing God, and you're going to begin responding as, as the God who is your rock, who is the one who speaks, who is the God who will stand up for you and release his authority through you. Maybe some of you have been rejected, even from certain churches, and you've gone there and you've released some things. And and they may have even been things from God, but the people were not ready. But I'm telling you that those who are called prophetically, you will absolutely hit many, many, many roadblocks, many walls. You're going to hit them over and over and over. Why? Because you're called to bring truth into areas where there are errors. You're called to bring direction into areas where there's, it's a directionless place where people are not walking. God has called you, but don't, don't short, short circuit. Don't you dare use AI. I'm serious. Don't you dare use AI to draft out a prophetic word. People are doing it. Don't you dare tell it to draft something like this prophetic word. Don't You're echoing. You're following a machine. I'm following the Lord. And so I want to, I want to initiate something today. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for everybody who's on the stream, whether it's live or you're watching later on. I'm going to pray. I believe in impartation. I believe that the real deal can be imparted to you. I don't think you have to, um, wait for, uh, for some magical thing to happen. I'm using that word purposely because a lot of people see the things of the spirit almost magically. Just like the guy in the book of Acts who thought he could buy the gift. Can't buy this one. Can't buy this one. So right now, I just want to encourage every one of you, open your hands, shut your eyes. Holy Spirit, right now, I'm asking for release of your glory on every person, Lord, who's watching. Father, whether they're watching, Father, just out of usualness, or whether they're watching because today they need something fresh from you. I'm asking God right now that you come on them. I'm asking Holy Spirit that you reignite Reignite, Lord, their passion, their heart for you, their their heart for purity, integrity. That, Lord, that they would carry viable words from you. That, Lord, the the tiddlywinks dreams and and visions that 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 they may have no value, no meaning. I'm asking God, would you make things clear again to them, Lord? I ask right, right now, Father, that that just like you spoke to Moses and and you spoke. You said, I speak to Moses as a man speaks to his man, not like others. 
You didn't speak to him in riddles. Father, I'm asking right now, would you release a company? No, Lord, would you, would you release an army of those who do not speak to you, uh, in, in just occasional situations, but who walk with you like Enoch did, walk with you like Moses did, who are not afraid to go into the most fearful places because you are there. Lord, I ask that you would begin speaking as a man would speak to a man, as friends, Lord, that you would give people words of knowledge, give people words of wisdom, give people prophetic words, Lord, things that absolutely require a complete dependence upon you speaking and not us trivializing and making things up. Father, I ask right now, right now for an impartation of that, Lord, on every person who's watching, that there will come a breakthrough that people who have not heard for years or maybe they've never heard, they'll hear now. Lord, I ask you, open up, open up, open up the revival, the revival of prophecy, that, Father, where prophecy has been undermined and cut under and where there are those who gladly and gleefully go after it because they have no understanding of this God who speaks to men. They only understand what it means to read the Bible and to pray. Lord, I'm asking in Jesus' name, that you release a supernatural ability to release a prophetic revival. That, Lord, even the things that are coming in this year, the things that are coming next year, the things that are happening in people's lives, I'm asking God now that you release the power, the power that flowed, Lord, through Elijah, the power that flowed from Elisha, the power that flowed through Jesus. That, Father, that, that the words that came through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Amos, Obadiah, Nahum, Joel, Zechariah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Malachi, all of them, supernatural, supernatural. Lord, not something that, that they're constantly having to go figure out, well, what, what's he saying? And Father, I'm asking for open eyes in the spirit. I'm asking that, that the eye of your heart, the eye of your heart, and incidentally, some of you are struggling with that right now because I use that in the book of um, Ephesians. He says, I pray, you ready? We, we read eyes. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be in line. That word is singular. I pray the eye of your heart will be enlightened. That you'll see, that you'll hear, that you'll respond, that you'll know God is speaking to you. That you're seeing in a realm that is not just coming through these portals. It's coming through a portal called him. And he's speaking to you. And I release that right now all over every single one of you that you move. Father, I ask right now, right now, Father, even through even through this, this webcast, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will come on people. The power will hit them right now, right now, Father. We, we ask, Lord, that there will be manifestations of your glory and power coming on people even as they're watching this. Right now. Father, you are, you are a God who is here and you're a God who's there. You're with them. Father, in their living rooms, in their, um, in the, at work, in their kitchens, wherever they are, Father, I release that right now. Whether they're in bed, Father, the power of God will come all over them that they will know I can only move by the power of God. I must move by the power of God. I must, must, must move with the power of God. I release that. I command your logical brain to submit. Listen, I didn't tell you to quit your logical brain, but I'm telling your logical brain to submit to the ways, the thoughts of the Spirit of God. God speaks about that in Corinthians, and he says, listen, what is not taught logically, the things by the Spirit have to be absolutely translated, tra interpreted by the Spirit. God wants to release that into you. That's your logical mind. Your mind that just wants to make it up. Your mind that wants to uh, disbelieve. I pray that your logical mind right now will submit to the ways of the Spirit, the ways of God, and that you'll hear His voice clearly. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Under the waterfall, deep
calls, deep calls to deep. Deep calls, deep calls to deep. Deep calls, deep calls to deep. Under the waterfall, under the waterfall, deep, 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 deep calls to deep. Deep, deep, deep calls to deep. 